everyone. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking and ITI Capital, I would like to thank you all for joining us on the IUL Chemical and Pharmaceutical Q3 and 9 month FY21 earnings call. Today we have with us Mr. Vijay Garg, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Abhay Raj Singh, KVP and Company Secretary, and Mr. Pradeep Khanna, CFO with us. We'll begin the call with opening remarks from the management, followed by an interactive question and answer session. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Gurg for his opening comments. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhinav. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking time to participate in this earning call. I hope all of you and your families are safe and in good health in this pandemic times. I trust you all have had an opportunity to run through the documents which we have shared earlier. Before we take the questions, we would like to throw some light on the business and share some perspective on performance during the quarter and nine months. IULCP is one of the leading API manufacturers in India and is a significant player in the field of commodity chemicals and specialty chemicals. IULCP, as all of you know, is the largest producer of uh, ibuprofen in the world with an installed capacity of 12,000 metric ton per annum. This is uh, the only company, IULCP is the only company which is completely backward integrated for all the major chemicals which are required to produce ibuprofen. IULCP presently hold around 35% of the total world market share in ibuprofen. Along with I, uh, ibuprofen, IULCP is also among the top producers of ethyl acetate with an installed capacity of 87,000 metric ton per annum. Our company is also second largest producer of isobutyl benzene, which is the key intermediate for ibuprofen and hold around 30% of the global market share. Ethyl acetate has wide, uh, wide application like in pharmaceutical, in ink industry, packaging industry, adhesive, uh, surface coating, etc. Company has the R&D facility which is approved by Department of Scientific and Industrial Research and equipped with all the advanced analytical instruments. Now I will share with you the major quarterly numbers. Our revenue was 521 crores for quarter 3 as compared to 515 crores in last year same quarters. EBITDA margins for the quarter was 165 crores in this quarter compared to 163 crores in the same quarter last year. This is around 1% growth on year-to-year -year basis. Our pack for the quarter was uh, 115 crores as against 98 crores uh, last year. This is higher by approximately 17%, which is largely due to increased on account of lower financial cost. In the global chemical, chemicals and uh, drug supply chain, IUL continues to take advantage of newer opportunities as and when they are present to themselves. In conclusion, uh, let me highlight that IUL chemicals and pharmaceutical is very well geared up to take up and deliver any opportunity which is available in the market with, it, with its skills and dedicated manpower and high-tech world-class facilities. With this, I would like to hand over the call to my colleague, Mr. Pradeep Khanna, uh, who is CFO of the company. Over to you, Mr. Pradeep Khanna. Thank you, Mr. Dev. Good afternoon, everyone, and warm welcome to IULCP quarter three and nine months financial year 2021 earning call. I will take you to mention highlights for the quarter ended 31st December 2020. Total revenue for the quarter increased by 1% to Rs 521 crores as compared to 
रुपीज फाइव फाइव वन फाइव करोड इन क्वार्टर थ्री ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी और नाइन मंथ ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन इट हैज बीन हायर वायर बाय फोर परसेंट टू रुपीज वन फाइव टू फाइव करोड एज कंपेयर टू रुपीज वन फोर सिक्स फोर करोड इन द सेम पीरियड लास्ट ईयर अवर नाइन मंथ परफॉर्मेंस हैव बीन इम्पेक्टेड बाय द नेशन वाइड लॉकडाउन इन द इनिशियल पार्ट ऑफ अयर इन क्वार्टर थ्री ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन अबिता वाज हायर एट रुपीज वन सिक्सटी फाइव करोड एज अगेंस्ट रुपीज वन सिक्सटी थ्री करोड रिपोर्टेड इन द थर्ड फाइनेंशियल क्वार्टर ऑफ द प्रोसीडिंग ईयर अबिता मार्जिन हैज सिग्निफिकेंटली रिमेंड कंसिस्टेंट एट थर्टी वन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट दिस ईयर कंपेयर टू क्वार्टर थ्री ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी और नाइन मंथ ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन अबिता हैज इनक्रीज बाय अलेवन परसेंट टू रुपीज फोर नाइन नाइन करोर एज कंपेयर टू फोर फोर एट करोर इन द सेम पीरियड ऑफ द लास्ट ईयर एंड अबिता मार्जिन वाज थर्टी टू पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट कंपेयर टू थर्टी पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट ड्यूरिंग नाइन मंथ ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स फॉर क्वार्टर थ्री टू डैश रुपीज वन वन फोर पॉइंट एट करोड एट एज अगेंस्ट नाइन्टी एट करोड ड्यूरिंग क्वार्टर थ्री ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी डेप्रीशिएशन फॉर द क्वार्टर वाइज रुपीज टेन करोड वाइल्ड द फनाफ कॉस्ट डिक्लाइंड बाय सिक्सटी परसेंट इट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव करोड इन क्वार्टर थ्री ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन Coming to the fundamental performance in quarter three of financial year 2021, the revenue from chemical to that 219.9 crore, as against rupees 193.9 crore in quarter three of financial year 2020, thereby increasing by 13.4 percent. This segment has achieved a stellar performance on account of market demand. and operational efficiency this segment contributed to 41% of total revenues ebit stood at 32.35 crores with ebit margin at 14.7% in the drug segment the revenue came at rupees 303.7 crores in quarter 3 of financial year 2021 ebit for the segment came at rupees 118.5 crore translating to margin of 39% the financial position of the company is stable and enjoy a very healthy liquidity position with adequate cash and bank balances with this i would now request the moderator to open the forum for question answer session thank you Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone? Who wishes to ask a question? You may press star and one. First question is from the line of Alankar Garude from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is, uh, if you could uh, give some color on the current pricing trends in ibuprofen, and uh, what would be your broad expectations uh, over, say, the next six to twelve months? That would be helpful. regarding ibu pricing uh, see ibu brufen pricing are stable uh, for the quarter uh, december quarter so we we have not seen any kind of uh, correction happening in uh, uh, the pricing as far as uh, the ibu brufen is concerned though the sale uh, has uh, came to a stagnancy because of uh, the stocking in first two quarters by various customers uh, 
so that way um, uh, i would like to to answer your question uh, the ibuprofen prices are stable as of now and uh, with uh, the gradual scale up of uh, bsf facility and then even uh, the the german city which could come on stream this year uh how do you look at the supply demand uh, demand dynamics within ibuprofen say over the next 1 to 2 years see as far as uh, bsf german facility is concerned uh, we have uh, not heard from uh, though they have made a announcement in the past that uh, it will come in 21 but now uh, that there is a uh not even a single customer is saying that uh, they they are coming up in 21 not even any announcement by the company we have heard but yes because of the uh, you can say sales sales has come down because of the lockdowns uh, because if you see uh, initially there was a lockdown in china then in india in europe us uk so now from last 6 months uh, europe uk and us most of the economies are under lockdown so that is why the sales sales has come to a stagnancy where you know i would say not the stagnancy it's a correction which is happening in the sales so we don't foresee any kind of uh, you you can say the oversupply in ibuprofen in uh, coming 1 to 2 years understood sir and uh, so my my final question is uh, Uh, given that we are completely backward integrated uh, in ibuprofen uh, how big an advantage is it i mean if you could broadly quantify the benefit uh, it would be really helpful the as far as cost is concerned uh, definitely because uh, we are completely backward integrated our if you see uh, our our lowest uh, cost raw material which is going into it is like in the in the range of 50 to say you can say 50 to 60 rupees a kg and our output is uh, say around 1000 rupees a kg so if you see overall value addition is is really high as far as competition is concerned uh, our broad calculation says that uh, our cost is lower by around uh, you can say 15 to 20 percent in 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 case of raw materials understood sir uh, great uh, that that that's it from my side thanks and all the best yeah thank you very much sir thank you the next question is from the line of ajay sharma from may bank please go ahead Yeah, hi. I just want to check. What is the reason for the margin decline for the drug segment in Q3? The margin dropped quite a bit, and also, if you could discuss what is the sales volume or the capacity utilization for ibuprofen and metformin in Q3? Uh, Q3, the major uh, drop is was uh, in the. Previous question also I have mentioned that due to COVID customers has done uh, panic buy in the first and second quarter of this year. So now they are consuming uh, their stocks. Along with this, with the improved condition uh, in health and hygiene and the lockdown uh, at in in the various countries in Europe, UK and Latin America, the Uh, demand uh, demand is not uh, much because of that uh, shortage in demand we have lost our around you can say 10% sales volume in in ibuprofen so since ibuprofen is uh, a major uh, um, uh, profit making product so that is the uh, only reason though in this quarters we have done uh, very good sales in terms of uh, you can say in chemical segment chemical segment we our sales has increased by 5% and uh, their uh, margins has also increased uh, drastically what, what is the uh, capacity utilization or sales volume for uh, ibuprofen metformin q3 see overall uh, in 9 months we have done uh, around 80% of the sales uh, capacity utilization uh, in ibuprofen whereas in metformin it, it has touched around uh, 50% of the install capacity okay and uh, on the, the api pipeline which you have so which are the key products you expect to commercialize over the next one or two years 
and also metformin uh, where do you see that uh, in terms of capacitation going forward means uh, do you think that will also be uh, become a big contributor going forward see metformin we have already commercialized if i can share with you like uh, we have uh, metformin which is already commercialized which has increased to the capacity of uh, you can say install capacity of uh, uh 50% the install capacity is around uh, 11000 metric tons so we have touched around uh, 5000 metric tons so 5500 metric ton uh, till this time so uh, i mean uh, average of the 9 months uh, next product uh, which is uh, a growing molecule for us is clopidogrel clopidogrel we have an install capacity of 180 tons so uh, this year we are targeting around uh, 140 ton uh, of uh, metformin of the uh, you can say sale which is uh, which is around you can say uh, around uh, 75 or 77 to 80% of the capacity utilization our next product is uh, pentaprazole uh, in pentaprazole uh, we have an install capacity of uh, 180 metric ton so about uh, in 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 this 180 metric ton we already had uh, reached to 120 metric ton of our sales so apart from this we have in pipeline uh, phenofabrate uh, then lamotrigine and then also deoxycholic acid these are the three more uh, molecule which are available uh, on the shelf so in these also we are uh, achieving like phenofabrate we are doing in multi-purpose plant. So there the capacity utilization for that plant is around 90%. So these are the, uh, you can say, uh, products available, uh, new products available with us. In totality we have done uh, 141 crore sales uh, uh, in nine months. So we are targeting around, uh, you can say, 180 to 200 uh, crore sales, sales turnover this year. Okay, and just the last question. So any plans of increasing capacities in any of the molecules? Uh, yes, we in a way we can say we, we, are, we are planning to increase the capacities like we... Uh, we we have a plant uh, which we called uh, FLU flu, which is a multi-purpose plant wherein we will be manufacturing uh, phenofabrate uh, L for lamotrigine and uh, U for uh, also deoxycholic acid. So uh, this plant we have designed uh, to manufacture 150 metric ton of uh, phenofabrate, 140 ton of lamotrigine, and 96 ton of also deoxycholic acid. Like this is a multi-purpose plant, so we will be increasing the capacity of these uh, three products uh, in this plant. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun from AQ of Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for giving me a chance to ask this question. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Thanks, sir. Sir, uh, this question is regarding the drug segment. Uh, sir, previous call was uh, stated that uh, we would like to target 30% revenue. Sir, sorry to interrupt you, but your voice sir, is breaking. The voice is not clear. One second, please. Uh, is it better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, just uh, referring to previous call, uh, sir, we had mentioned we would like to target somewhere around 30% revenue uh, within the drug segment from other products, uh, that is non ibuprofen products. Uh, so quick calculation means that uh, on a full year basis, uh, this would be somewhere 450 to 500 crores uh, of full year revenue. Uh, so just uh, some clarification on when uh, we think we can achieve this uh, target. Uh, very valid question and uh, even this question is very near to our heart also because uh, we are targeting uh, much more revenue from uh, other than ibuprofen. So, we are targeting 400 to 500 crore uh, uh, revenue. Like I mentioned, this year we are targeting around uh, 200 crore. So in coming uh, two years' time, my expectation is that we will be able to achieve our target. 
like uh, where where our the products uh, we, we we are we are increasing our clientele in all our products uh, if you see macformin we have increased the capacity as i mentioned in phenofabrit uh, clopidogrel uh, even uh, pentaprazole lamotrigine or sodioxycholic acid we we are we are we are witnessing a demand uh, in these products so to answer your question in coming uh, Two years time, uh, you can say two to maximum three years time, uh, we'll be able to achieve the 500 crore target from other than ibuprofen products. Oh, okay. So our second question is regarding the chemical segment. So uh, this time the EBIT was somewhere around 13-14 percent margin. Uh, so this is because of better realization from ethyl acetate. Yeah. along with the uh, thyl acetate uh, ibb has uh, added but major it has come from uh, thyl acetate uh, margin uh, sir uh, ibb uh, where uh, how much is being sold in uh, uh, in the external market if you can share that figure around 25% we are selling in uh, external markets 75% is uh, captive potential okay all right sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of nimish mehta from research delta advisors please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on continuing the set of numbers uh, um, you know this question is more on the business uh, model and uh, i would like to understand you mentioned that in i in i would prefer we have the uh, least cost right in comparison to other players So is it only because of the uh, backward integration we have, or we also have some differentiated process, uh, or you know, some R&D in process chemistry, which is how we have achieved this? Uh, yeah, Mr. Navish, uh, this is a combination of various things. So one, as I mentioned, 15 to 20 percent is uh, on account of you can say the backward integration, uh, wherein. Uh, uh we 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 are getting those margins uh, with our with our competition so, uh, apart from this uh, our r&d um, uh, along with the new product development uh, one team we have dedicated for the improvement of the you can say process cost uh, in the existing product like uh, we have not dedicated the entire r&d team for the new developments so one one set of uh, people is uh, dedicated for the improvement in the in terms of uh, you can say uh, raw materials so it, it's it's a mix uh, okay so you know what i'm trying to understand for example when you select a new product you select purely based on uh, our ability to backward integrate or you also uh, before you start you are sure of a process which is also you know lower cost than others so you know is is it a capital intensive business model or do we have r&d also before we select the product that's what i'm trying to understand no we we are always going uh, uh, with the r&d the selection criteria is very broadly share with you is is based on r&d so on the gen we are into generic space all our products are generic products so we are, we are, our marketing team is uh, uh, going in the market uh, so they are they are they are collecting few names uh, of the product which are uh, you know are in, in generic space and sold sold in uh, higher numbers or uh, there is demand supply gap from from that we we uh, the product goes to our r&d so in r&d we have two criteria uh, for the product selection one is uh, no no doubt first first and foremost is the raw material cost and the major thrust we gave that it should be uh, first is non china uh, dependent intermediate should be there so we, uh, our our uh, first target is that uh, the product which we select or which our r&d manufacture is 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 you no know, should not be dependent any intermediate should not be dependent on uh, china second is uh, on environment concern it, the product should not be a highly polluting product so this is the selection criteria for our, all our product so uh, rm our rm cost is is, uh, is also the major part okay uh, okay no problem yeah, i actually at any 
uh, you know, maybe follow up, but I, I think I should take it offline. Uh, uh, no issue. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keshav Kumar from Raksan Investment Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks a lot for taking the question. Uh, sir, uh, in an interview on a public news channel a day before, you said that there has been a correction in ibuprofen prices uh, due to a demand and supply gap. Uh, but with the first participant, uh, you were telling that uh, the prices have remained fairly stable in the past quarter. So, sir, could you clarify whether it's a dual impact of the prices falling as well as uh, volumes in this quarter? Uh, yes, you are right. In uh, G Business uh, interview, I have mentioned. Uh, see, I have mentioned in the in the previous question that for the for the quarter we we are able to sustain. The, the, no doubt there is a correction because uh, demand has come down uh, because of lockdowns. Uh, all all pharmaceutical products uh, which are used in flu or antibiotics you can say general ailments the demand is low so we we are able to sustain the reason is the long term commitments which our customers has done so this this is a ongoing process like it's 60 to 70 percent of our customers are giving us long term orders so though market there is a correction but we are able to maintain Okay, sir. So, sir, could, could you elaborate, uh, like, could you give a delta between the prices uh, that, uh, that were there in Q2 and Q3? Around, uh, you can say, one and a half to two dollars delta is there, uh, like, uh, spot prices. Like, spot uh, companies you see in earlier discussions also, we have mentioned, the, the market has touched around 18 dollars, 18, 90, 18 to 20 dollars, but we were at uh, 14 to 15 dollars. So the correction which is happening is on the spot market. So we do very less business on spot market. We have most of our business is on a long term basis. So spot market has come down to you can say thirteen fourteen dollars, uh, which will be settled at around say around twelve 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 to thirteen dollars. All right, sir. So I have another question. Uh, sir, uh, you said that you'll be commercializing Gaba printing in uh, Q1 FY22. Yes. So, sir, uh, what what would be the uh, gestation period to go to full capacity? And also, sir, what what would be your target for FY22 Gaba printing revenues? See, uh, we are targeting uh, our Gaba printing to start in uh, you can say first. Uh, June, July, maybe June uh, will be able to start, June or July. So, as you know, gestation period is around uh, uh, one and a half year at, at least uh, because uh, major quantities will go to the regulated market. We, 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 are already, we have already started the process and uh, uh, we have few anchor customers as well. So it will take around one and a half year to stabilize the sales. Okay, uh, sir. So what would be your expectation in the first year? I mean, how much do you think current revenue is coming from uh, the new product? From, you mean to say, Gala Pentin? Gala Pentin, yes, sir. Gala Pentin in first First year, next year itself, we, we are uh, hopeful to achieve around uh, 30 to 40 percent of the install capacity. Okay. So uh, that will be going to the non rec market only. Okay, all right. And that, that will be all from Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish from Motilal Oswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so all these ibuprofen, you know, some of the Indian uh, your uh, peers are putting up uh, capacities. Uh, is that a reason why, you know, uh, do you feel that there is an excess supply of ibuprofen now in the market and that is the reason why the prices are holding on the low side of the band? No, it is not uh, because of uh, the excess capacity. We, this is, as I mentioned, is because of the stocking done by our customers. Uh, the panic buy buying was done in Q1 and Q2. 
so now people are using the stocks uh, so this correction is largely because of that see if you see uh, presently in pharma space uh, most of our sales are to the regulated customers uh, or blue chip companies there uh, all these companies will take at least uh, you can say 2 to 3 years uh, for the uh, minimum 2 years time is the gestation period for any product to be you can say commercialized okay so so on a contractual basis uh, the contracts that we have with the customers dollar 13 to 14 uh in the last 5 years uh, what was the bo- uh, bottom number for this what was the bottom pricing in the last 5 years 5 years uh, if you see 5 years back it was in the range of uh, 9 dollars okay okay so so any uh, so just playing david's advocate here do you feel that uh, the prices can revert back uh, or something has changed on the ground which makes you believe that 13 14 dollars could sustain so this year uh, 13 14 dollars will sustain i mentioned but uh, next year the correction will happen so my, our target is around uh, 12 dollars for the next year okay okay this is very helpful uh, so on ethyl acetate uh, how big is that portion of for us uh, because the, the reason why i'm asking is uh, obviously lakshmi organics is uh, one of the bigger players in the market uh, so is there a scope for uh, 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 you know a player also a player like you Uh, to keep on getting uh, and expanding this business yeah all the top players like lakshmi jubli and uh, sumaya and we we have absorbed the capacities like 87000 is our installed capacity hmm. so we are targeting around f- f- further increase in the capacity our full fledged target is around uh, 120000 metric ton uh, maybe next year we will reach uh, actually speaking this is a green solvent and uh, the demand is increasing day by day because people are coming out of petrochemical based solvent uh, and are switching to the green solvents like uh, thyl acetate so that way we how much uh, what is the capacity addition that we are doing here uh, you can say 87 from 87000 to or 90000 to uh, 120000 So around 30 percent, uh, 33 percent increase will be there. Okay, okay. So, so but but the margin profile or, or the realizations in this business uh, uh, could be far far lower than what we are doing currently, right? If I'm not wrong, uh, eight to ten percent is the kind of EBITDA margin in this business. This year we this quarter rather or I would say we we have touched around 17 percent. Eh? whereas okay. uh, past yes you are right it was in the range of uh, 8 to uh, around 8% percent was the number and uh, see with the increased capacity the, uh, the this will help uh, our company in two manners uh, it will, first is like uh, with the increased capacity we will be able to you know negotiate negotiation power will come to us second is that uh, we will be uh, most of the capacity expansion will be uh, you can say with the with the very little uh, capex yeah yeah okay so this is very helpful sir uh, uh, yeah. i would say like all the best thank you so much thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of sayantan from pine bridge investments please go ahead Uh, thank you sir for the opportunity uh, if if you could uh, just uh, see uh, break out how much will be investing in, in the ethyl acetate uh, expansion and uh, also we could uh, uh, break out how much we are investing for for the tapa pentin and what is the capacity we are planning there uh, and lastly um, i had a, a more of a suggestion uh, i understand we we are uh, looking to for all uh, processes where uh, which are green and and cleaner and non polluting uh, i would request you to share some details in your uh, annual report in terms of uh, the efforts we've uh, uh, made in, in in terms of you know uh, reducing um, uh, our carbon footprint and uh, what are the efforts we're putting in in that direction and then if you can just uh, put additional details on an annual report uh, that will be helpful because uh, these days um, uh, esg is becoming a big uh concern uh, so I, i would request you to you know 
uh, shed some additional uh, and, and some company already does it. We just need to put it, uh, more of that in, in the annual report and then uh, disclose uh, a little bit more data on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. This, your suggestion is very well taken, and uh, my team is along with me listening this. And even on personal ground also, I would request uh, my team to, you know, incorporate uh, your suggestion in times to come in our uh, annual report. And definitely we will do, do, sir. We, we are in the process, and uh, wherever uh, some external help is required to, you know, assess the data, We'll do that. Definitely, we'll increase, uh, include uh, this in uh, in, uh, in our uh, annual report. So, on the question front, uh, like a thyl acetate, uh, maximum to my mind is that that de bottlenecking and uh, adding some equipment. Uh, we'll be investing around 10 crores, not more than that, uh, on a thyl acetate. So, to increase the capacity by 30 percent. So as far as uh, GABA pentene is concerned, we are coming up with a plant uh, which is having capability to produce 600 metric ton uh, uh, per annum, so around 50 tons a month uh, it will be the capacity. Uh, with a capex uh, uh, which we are targeting is around uh, 60 crore uh, capex is planned for this uh, GABA pentene. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel. From Shanti Patel Investments, please go ahead. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, with these all uh, expansions, etc., what will be our approximate turnover for the year 21-22? And what will be the percentage of pairs? Approximately. 21, 22, uh, the overall turnover we are targeting uh, around, uh, you can say, uh, 24 to 2500 crore uh, will be the top line uh, with a pat of uh, around, uh, you can say, our target is uh, max. I cannot uh, tell you the numbers. Uh, so it will be in the range of, you can say, 20% uh, will be the pad. Okay. And uh, our debt will go up or go down in next year? No, no. Uh, we are a debt-free company, sir, and we will remain debt-free. So oh, everything from inter yeah. internal yeah, accruals. Yeah. All, the, all the expansions are going from the internal accruals, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Toshar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, you're guided for 20, 25% growth for the next two, three years. Now, in view of the lower volume of uh, ibuprofen and also the uh, likely falling prices, uh, does this guidance remain or uh, you think we will grow at a lower rate? Uh, with this uh, correction coming in ibuprofen, so we are targeting, say, around 15% uh, uh, growth. So, like uh, I mentioned uh, for 21, 22, we are targeting 2,400 uh, to 2,500 crores uh, uh, revenue. Definitely correction will come, but uh, uh, at the same time, we, we are going to, you know, uh, increase our uh, capability in uh, thyl acetate, which we have already done, and uh, in the process, uh, maybe within a quarter time, we'll be increasing the capacity, maybe in the phased manner from our uh, total target is 30 percent, maybe 20 percent growth you will see maybe next quarter uh, or the, uh, the running quarter, and uh, uh, along with that, uh, the revenue increase from the new products will happen. And what about profits? At what rate the profits will grow? Profits, sir, we are targeting, say, in the range of 15 percent, sir, Pat. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Paresh and from Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, 
Just on ibuprofen, you said that uh, you don't, uh, do you sell in the spot market or is it completely all long term contract? No, some quantities we sell on sport, uh, it's around 70% is on long term basis, long term understanding is there, on 30% is uh, on the spot market. Okay, okay. And uh, the realizations that you said of $13, that was for uh, this particular quarter, right? For ibuprofen. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right? And how has the realization been last nine months versus this nine months? Uh, you mean uh, last year? Yeah. Or last December? It's in the same range. It's in the same range. Like uh, last year, uh, maybe one, uh, I don't have the exact numbers for last year, but uh, it's in the range of 14 to $15. Like uh, this, uh, last year it may have touched $15, and this year it uh, it may be 14 and a half. Like 70% of the business we are doing on a uh, long-term basis. And even spot market... Uh, our spot market is, uh, say, uh, in real term, it is in the range of uh, 10 to 15 percent. In 30 percent also, 15 per, uh, 50 percent is, uh, is is the understanding where where we don't have uh, any paper work done. But uh, um, you can say, in in other terms, we, we we are clear that these customers are dedicated to us. So okay. correction is not uh, more. This year it's not more than uh, say half a dollar. Okay, so my, no, my, uh, what I was trying to understand, let's say in the last three to four years, how has the pricing been on the contract side for you on the uh, ibuprofen market? See, the five years side. back, uh, say in the range of nine dollars, uh, it was around sixty for fifty to sixty. Then uh, with, with uh, after this shortage start happening, so we enter into the contract with the long term customer or the blue chip companies uh, very big names which are very big names uh, uh, you can say in the uh, in the in the pharma space so there also we we are uh, on yearly basis so that way to answer your question is like uh, it was in the range of 9 dollars then 11 dollars then 14 dollars 15 dollars uh, this is the range uh, Say in the seventy percent uh, range covered. Okay. Okay. And what gives you a confidence that it cannot come down back to nine dollars? See, it will not come to nine dollars, but uh, say in th two to three years' time, it will come in the range of eleven dollars. Uh, like um, all big companies, uh, they they are they are not uh, ready to sell. Uh, like uh, the companies who has increased the capacities or capabilities. Uh, uh, is majorly because of uh, the price rise. Okay, okay. And uh, just to understand, uh, put things a little bit more clear. Uh, for next year FY22, you will benefit from the gabapentin capacity coming up, right? And the ethyl acetate facility coming up. Is that correct? No. Next year, we will not be benefited because of gabapentin capacity. Next year, from other products like, uh, see, uh, I want to mention here, sir, that any pharma product uh, which you want to sell in regulated market, minimum time you require gestation period is two years. After, say, six months to one year, we are selling in a non rec market from where you will not get uh, much margins and much uh, volumes. So that way we don't expect, uh, we are not expecting anything uh, coming or benefits coming from government, but uh, yes. The product which we have launched two to three years back, like clopidogrel, pentoprazole, uh, even uh, uh, our flu is coming up, like uh, where we will be manufacturing uh, uh, phenofabrate, uh, lamotrigine, and also deoxycholic acid. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right, fine. Thank you. Uh, just one last question before I drop out. Uh, this, uh, the the contract prices uh, that you said they are annually reset. When? when are they annually reset? Yeah, yeah they are annually reset. Huh? No, when? Is it like in April or January or how? Or is it uh, spread across the year with different customers? It is happening in the month of uh, uh, for the foreign customer or most of the customer uh, overseas customer. It, it was happening in the month of uh, you can say. Uh, November, December, during CPHA we started the dialogue and then we were finalizing in the month of uh, December.
but uh, overseas customer uh, it has already been finalized and uh, domestic yes it's, it's a march cycle okay and for overseas you finalize at 12 dollars for next year for this year jan to december now sorry sir uh, this is number can't be disclosed okay okay, okay. and uh, what percentage of the sales come from the regulated market for ibuprofen uh, percentage of sale if i see it's a 50 50 for us for uh, ibuprofen and from the regulated market uh, around uh, 50% of that 50% comes from the regulated market no i i didn't get it what was the earlier 50% See, if we see total total say 10000 ton we are going to sell so from that 10000 ton 5000 ton will be from the regular uh, uh, sport and 5000 will be from the domestic okay and around uh, you can say 2500 tons to 3000 tons we are selling in the regulated market okay okay fine fine thank you yeah thank you very much thank you very much ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Raj Kumar. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. And I have uh, most of the questions uh, already got answered. I just have one question and one suggestion. One question is regarding the receivable days. Uh, like currently, how many? What is what is the receivable days we are running in the company? Data. Data. i am not getting your uh, question can can you repeat please sir so speak uh, little louder regarding the receivable days that are receivable receivable okay yeah yeah every 30 days average 30 days uh, is the number uh, say for the receivable uh, okay. fine in one suggestion is from my sir is that regarding your com- uh, company's website it looks with the uh, old fashioned like i don't know if, if you want to continue that way or you want to like to improve now because we are moving into overseas business in the coming uh, coming one month within march you will find a very good uh, and and uh, elaborated in the with the, with the latest uh, tools and techniques techniques used for the website it's yeah. already under process for development sir okay thanks thank you very much the next question is from the line of vishal manchanda from nirmal bank institutional queries please go ahead thanks for the opportunity uh, on ibuprofen uh, can we uh, reach our uh, theoretical capacity of 12000 tons per annum for for coming year uh, definitely no but uh, yes we are targeting see with the, with this correction happening after that uh, since we we are uh, we have reached to almost all, all the big firm pharma, pharma customers in us as well where we we have already got many andas under approval or got approved so uh, once this correction happen so maybe in uh, 23 we will be able to achieve the full capacity sir okay. and so basically there is no con- technical constraint in terms of achieving that 12000 no 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 there is no technical uh, constraint all the constraint which was there say maybe 2 years 3 years back now those constraints are not there because we have reached to all from big to small customers we have we, most of the customers has approved us sir okay uh, and sir when you uh, say your costs are lower by 15% compared to competitor so uh, do you uh, just mean at the drop level say at the raw material level or you mean uh, at the ebitda level you would be uh, No, no, it's on raw material level, sir. Okay, so you also get the benefit of scale uh, on the top of that. Sir. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that is on that is on account of you can say raw material cost because of backward integration. Along with that, uh, we have twelve thousand metric ton uh, installed capacity at uh, say very less capex. So. that way uh, the additional margins will come from the uh, you can say scale 
That is right. Uh-huh. And then uh, on the multi-purpose plant, wherein we are going to manufacture phenofibrate, lamotrigine, and other API. So, is that ready and up for commercialization? No, it is under construction. It will be like we are targeting May, June will be for this uh, flu multi-purpose and uh, June, July for gabapentin. Both the plants are under construction, sir. So you can, you would be able to start commercial revenues in FI22? Uh, for flu, for, for multi-purpose uh, products, yes, we will be. But for gabapentin, um, you can say 22 will be doing the commercial production. Commercial, some quantity will start, but not the full capacity. But for flu, it will be full capacity because all the products are commercial. So we have to, you know, show just a change over to, the, to our customers, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, sir. That's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keshav Kumar from Raksan Investors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Sir, there is news that DSS has resumed ibuprofen production. So, sir, has that impacted the past quarter? So, sir, is, is that uh, also contributing to oversupply in the market? So BSF has started uh, their uh, plant uh, uh, maybe nine months back. This is this, this correction is not a count of BSF. All all these suppliers are facing the same problem. This this is majorly because of the overstocking by our customers. Sir. Okay, all right, all right, sir, all right. Yeah. That will be all from here. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, thank, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so what uh, I understand from uh, whatever you have said on the call so far is that uh, next year uh, there may be a uh, drop in size of ibuprofen and volumes, let's assume, are constant. So ibuprofen actually will degrow and your other pharma products will grow by around... Uh, 100, 150 crores, and some part of growth will come from ethyl acetate. So yes. can you talk a little more on ethyl acetate business uh, in terms of, you know, uh, what is the raw material, whom do you sell to, and uh, uh, how do we compare with competition? That will be helpful. Thank you. The ethyl acetate, uh, you have asked about the raw materials. The raw material, we are using two raw materials. One is uh, ethanol which we are importing from U.S., and second is uh, acetic acid, which we are importing from various countries like uh, Malaysia. We are importing We are importing from China, so some quantities we are buying from India as well. Uh, as far as the thyl acid is, it is concerned, for next financial year, we are targeting a growth of 30% uh, in thyl acetate. So ethyl acetate, we have very vast reach, like uh, we are present pan-India, number one, number two, we are selling, say, around uh, uh, per month, around 20% goes in exports as well. So overall, if I see, we are present in pharmaceutical market, we are present in, uh, you can say, lamination, we are present in solvent industry, wherever the applications of ethyl acetate are concerned, we are, we are, we are present. And uh, with this present capacity, we, we, are, we, are, we are always oversold by, you can say, one or two months. So that is the reason which is, uh, you know, forcing us to increase the capacity. So, uh, along with this, uh, as uh, you have also mentioned, that uh, we, we are targeting around 200 crore additional revenue from the uh, new products. So, this will, uh, you know, compensate uh, or rather uh, both things put together will be achieving our targeted uh, numbers of uh, 24 to 2500 crores next year. So. Okay. In the past, sir, uh, the company had difficulty due to fluctuation in prices of uh, ethyl acetate. Uh, so, how do you, uh, you know, uh, hedge against this risk going forward? Sir, in the past, what has happened was totally different from what the market or what the scenario for ethyl acetate is today. In the past, if we'll go to the history, 
in the past we were totally dependent on uh, uh, indian suppliers for ethanol so uh, ethanol government of india has uh, came up with a policy to mix it with the petrol and diesel so all of a sudden all the suppliers uh, has started uh, giving it to the petroleum companies uh, where they were getting around 50% higher prices than at whatever we were so now this scenario has completely changed sir if you talk of all the all the customers uh, all the you can say manufacturer i would say in india or in china or anywhere like uh, one thing is clear that this product is not uh, a importable product in india from china or anywhere because uh, one is the 7.5% duty second is the freight and all and along with that all these uh, manufacturing countries are importing now ethanol either from majorly it was coming from uh, usa now it has started coming from brazil so these are the two destinations so entire world is completely competitive sir. so today's scenario is totally different from what has happened in two, uh, 2014 so please be rest assured sir your company is now uh, having the scale where we are able to compete with the global players and uh, sir is the last question is a thyl acetate sold in contract basis or is it a spot market it's not yearly contracts but uh, yes monthly contracts are there monthly contract along with spot because this is a commodity chemical sir okay so but you will have enough uh, uh, measures in place to ensure that uh, you know your adequately hedged and price fluctuations are not hit or side worse yes yes sir all the all the fluctuations okay. uh, because uh, because uh, we are doing 2 to 3 months contract for the ethanol as well as uh, the st gas okay thank thank you sir thank you, thank you. The next question is from the line of Alankar Garode from Macquarie Group. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the follow-up. Uh, sir, couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, you you mentioned about uh, ibuprofen pricing being in that twelve thirteen dollars uh, range uh, next year, as in FY twenty two, and it could possibly come down to say about eleven dollars in the next two to three years. So, is there a further risk to this number, assuming the the BSS German facility comes on stream in uh, say twenty twenty one? Uh, just to answer your question sir see uh, bsf has announced 12 and half dollars for the german facility and uh, we have not heard from anybody or from the company uh, say bsf that they are coming up uh, when they are coming up with that facility so i don't foresee any kind of further uh, you know cor- cor- correction in the in the prices of ibuprofen Okay, so so when you mention eleven dollars in the next two to three years, uh, it it factors in in any risk on this front on the, on the supply front. Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? So, sir, when you mention uh, your expectation of uh, pricing being about eleven dollars uh, uh, in the next say two to three years, it factors in any any risk uh, coming in from higher capacity addition from any of your competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything we have covered, sir. So we, we are, we are speaking on the conservative side. Understood, sir. So I just uh, the second question is wanted to know generally what is what is currently say the pricing differential between regulated and uh, semi-regulated markets for ibuprofen? Around two dollars. Okay, and and uh, I think uh, safer to say that given that almost seventy five, seventy seventy five percent of our ibuprofen sales are to semi regulated market, uh, if the 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 if we increase the contribution of regulated markets, then possibly we could look at a slightly higher number than the numbers which you mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. We 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 are. If you ask me, uh, our focus, my entire marketing team is focusing on uh, the export sales. Sir. or you can say regulated market our target is regulated market only sir understood sir uh, understood great uh, thanks and all the best thank you very much the next question is from the line of dhawal sangvi an individual investor please go ahead 
yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, sir uh, i have some broader question from a vision perspective uh, like for next 3 years let's assume fy24 i mean do we anticipate uh, doubling of the revenue or, or what what would be our vision yeah mr lankit see we are targeting uh, around 20 to 25% uh, growth on year to year basis uh, so but uh, because of this uh, correction we, we, we our target is around 15% for the next year so we are confident that with the, the product pipeline and with the new products revenue growing so we'll be able to uh, sustain 15 to 20% uh, growth rate in coming uh, five, 4 to 5 years okay and uh, sir another question being uh, so if we consider 4 to 5 years what would be our target of uh, our share from ibuprofen versus non ibuprofen i mean what would be the percentage if you can help me? We are targeting around 30% revenue from ibuprofen. Balance 70% will come from the other products, or chemicals or new pharma products. And our blended margins will still remain the same? Not of today, but uh, yes, in the range of 15% we are targeting. So okay. if we get any good opportunity, it may increase to 20%. Okay. okay. And sir, one last question. Uh, based on the PLI scheme that government has announced, uh, I understand that we are currently not looking, but uh, any anything in the pipeline, in the R&D, that may be attributing towards that, that we may be thinking on? See, uh, the PLI scheme is majorly, the trust area there is uh, antibiotics and, and the fermentation products. So presently we, we are not focusing on our R&D, is not focusing on those. But yes, with the kind of surplus cash available, if any opportunity we get, so definitely uh, we can explore. Sure. Thanks a lot and all the best. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Lankit. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we really thank uh, all of our uh, shareholders for, and, and the consulting companies uh, for participating in this call. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the service provider, Richa Arnav and uh, uh, Mr. Mahajni for, for their help in assisting us uh, for this uh, conference call. Thank you very much once again and have a great day. Thank you very much.